Welcome to a new update of Pixel Art Academy and today we're gonna look at three things support for external drawing software, learning tasks in the journal and a challenge where you copy an existing pixel art game sprite. Hello and welcome to another vlog update of my video game Pixel Art Academy where you learn how to draw in an adventure game. I'm Retro and I want to show you what I've been working on for this last month and a half or so. And if you remember back in the episode about the drawing editor that's built into the game, there was a tutorial section on how to use it. But as it turns out, you know you guys are out there, there are some people they don't actually like to go through tutorials, they just skip them. And I think that's completely fine. I think there's two kinds of people. Some like to be prepared in advance, get the first knowledge in before they try it. And there are some people, me included, that just like to open up software and just click everywhere to learn. And so I want to enable those kind of players in the game as well. So I made the tutorial completely optional. But what the game does give you is a challenge to make sure that you do have those basics down so you know what kind of things you should try and explore. You can do it either in the built-in editor, that's the top way, or you could use external graphic editor software that you have installed on your computer. So why would you even want to use other software if you already have this built-in editor? Well, some people are already used to pixel art software and they just want to keep on going with it. Some people are just starting out and they want to learn some specific software, let's say Photoshop because they want to be able to put that on their resume and they want to spend as much time as they can in that software. And the third thing is maybe you don't want to just do pixel art, you also want to do other kinds of digital drawing. so with software like Photoshop or Gimp or Krita, you can actually do all of that by using just one software. Some of you might remember a tutorial that I put out called the No Bullshit Pixel Art Tutorial. I was kind of frustrated with all of the tutorials that have a lot of fluff talking about stuff like what I'm doing right now instead of just jumping straight into the thing. And so I made one that's actually just one minute long and it's so concise, it's actually too concise, so I'm just, it's so short, I'm just gonna play it for you right now. Hello and welcome, my name is Matej Jan, but you can call me Retro and this is the No Bullshit Pixel Art Tutorial. Everyone can do pixel art and it's used for many different things. Game art, album art, magazine illustrations, even web pages. You can make paintings, t-shirts and your grandmother probably did it before you. So what are you waiting for? Fire up your favorite drawing tool and open up a blank canvas. Make sure there's a way to place down individual pixels. Zoom in as close as you need and start doing some pixel art. You can begin by copying existing pixel art until you get used to the tools. Start from small to big and black and white to color. By the end you should be able to use the pencil, bucket, eraser and color picking. Pixel art was born under the limitations of early computers. You can find inspiration in sprites, images from 2D computer games. Many recognizable characters were created within the constraints of their small canvas size. After you've got your reference, you can place it in your image on a new layer, open the up side by side, place behind the canvas, on a separate screen or just look at things from real life. Turn on the grid set to your sprite or tile size. Use the same number for subdivisions or turn on the pixel grid. If you set the spacing down to 1, change the style to dots. If your pencil behaves funny, turn off step to grid. Stop copying existing pixel art as soon as possible. When you get to bigger sprites, use the original only as a loose reference. Eventually change the reference to a photograph and now you're creating your own pixel art. Did you see that? It's just like uh, too much. It's like I wanted to do so much and so little, I don't know. I just need to take a step back. So people can breathe and actually see what's going on in there. So back then I did do an extra thing, I put out slides that go for each part of the video. And in this update I'm pretty much bringing all of that content into Pixel Art Academy. You're gonna start by asking my character in the game about different software, maybe you wanna use Pixel Art specific software or you wanna use generic software like I said. Pick one and you get to choose it now in the drawing app, in the settings, make your selection and for this recording I'm gonna choose GIMP because a new version just came out and I wanted to check it out. When you come back to talk to me, I'm gonna be able to give you a recommendation based on your choice, at least for the most popular ones, other ones you can also just google for new tutorials on YouTube 
And again, you can watch that tutorial if you wanna get prepared in advance. If you just wanna jump straight into it, let's go to the first task. It's doodling around, just finding the four kind of basic tools that every software needs to have if you wanna do pixel art. One is the pencil that enables to put down individual pixels. Then we have the eraser that does the opposite. Then there's the color fill or a bucket that just used to color big shapes at once. And there's also color picking. So when you have colors down that you can quickly switch to a color that's already on canvas. If you were doing this on your own before when I just had these slides, you were pretty much on your own to do all of these steps. Now that this is integrated into Pixel Art Academy, you go into your journal to show that you've done this task. It's this second icon next to uploading images. And you know, right now it's just the alpha still. So only your active tasks are gonna show up. And it also shows only those tasks that were added into your study plan. So make sure in your study plan, you've actually added the pixel art software goal. And so those tasks that are highlighted in blue are gonna show up over there. There are different types of learning tasks. Some you will just check that you've done them. Some will automatically get checked off. And this one, for example, you have to upload an image. So here's the doodle that we've made and I upload it. And now this task is complete. If you look back at the slide, you will see that besides these four main tools, there are also other things that are useful. And for these, there's also a task inside of this goal but it's kind of a side task, it's optional. So I'm only gonna ask you, hey, do you wanna try this out? Or you can just keep going. And again, you can refer to the tutorials if you wanna find out what kind of these tools are, especially in generic software, there might be things that you need to set correctly, like turn off anti-aliasing on these kind of tools. And once you've done playing around, upload this as well into your journal. Next task, Remember that part when I say start small to big, black and white to color? Well, this is now the beginning of the copy reference task. First thing, you need to get a reference to copy. To do that, you're gonna go to the gallery upstairs from the store and there you will meet Corinne. Corinne is the gallery curator and you can talk to her about that. There's a couple of in jokes between me and her. All of this was co-written with her. She's a good friend of mine. Was also at graduate school of education with me. She made the creativity project that I always keep on my water bottle. And I hope to one day actually have this in Pixel Art Academy when we get to galleries and museums and that kind of stuff. Anyway, she's in charge of the gallery at Retinary Headquarters and the collection of books and video games. And when you ask her about getting a reference, she will actually invite you to go downstairs, you follow her, and there she gives you options. What kind of sprite do you wanna get out of the huge library? It's really up to you, so you get to choose the size, whether you want it to have just one color or more colors, and then you get to choose, do you wanna do a character or something else? And if you choose a character, you have the heroes, kind of protagonists, or the enemies, and then if you choose other things, we have either vehicles, so we have a couple of spaceships and mechs and that kind of stuff, or other items like inventory items, some buildings, weapons. In total, there are 29 sprites to draw from 27 games. Super huge thanks to all of the indie game developers that let me use their sprites. These are my favorite games and so yeah, thank you. It's an honor to have some of the games that I love inside of my video game, it's so cool. Anyway, I'm not gonna show you all of them here, but I do wanna give a special shout out to someone, we're gonna choose Ted Tantrums. This is an enemy from the game Don't Give Up, A Cynical Tale, one of my favorites from last year. I played a demo, it was called Cynical 7 back then, if you watch this channel closely, it was one of my top picks in the October episode of Retronator Pixel Art News. Ted Tantrum is such a great character, he fucks up with your pizza, pretty much, basically, and then you kick his ass. And why I wanted to mention this game now is because it's right now on Kickstarter, 
If you like this kind of games, like a little bit of Undertale adventure, plus a little bit of combat comic fighting and really good dialogue, go check it out on Kickstarter. As for this video, we're gonna go and copy the Death Tantrum sprite. We're gonna go to the drawing app and now, because we have chosen external software, we're gonna get two options under the sprites. We get the assets and the upload and if we choose the assets option, First of all, we have a template that's already the correct size of the sprite and includes all of the colors that you need. And then we have the sprite's reference card. So we download that. And now there's actually a lot of ways how we're gonna look at this reference while we're drawing it. We're going to open it up in the same software and we're gonna show them side by side. And in GIMP you have to turn off the single mode window, single window mode. And of course, if you have a second monitor, just open up the image in your image software and drag it over there. You can open it up on your phone, or you can print it out, whatever you want. There are a lot of ways. And when you go to the journal to add this task, it lets you choose what kind of options you tried or you're gonna use in the future. So this is another kind of a learning task. And when you're done with this, there's only one task left, and that one is to turn on the grid. Because if you're gonna wanna see where to place those pixels down, it's often really useful if you turn the grid on, find it in your software of choice. It's usually pretty somewhere convenient. And once we have that down, I take a screenshot, upload that, and we've finished the external software tutorial. All that is left is to actually copy the sprite. So I'm gonna fast forward here, and then I'm gonna export it to PNG file, which I can then upload in the drawing app which is gonna give me this nice little analysis of everything I've done and show any mistakes. And you can see here, I have a few of them wrong. The neck area is a little bit too high. I'm gonna go back in, face that up, upload again, and now check mark. We have successfully completed copy the reference, which means now when we go to the project section, if we're working on the snake admission project, we can now download and upload the sprite so that we can use external software. Maybe you wanna open it up in a sprite. Upload it and now you can go and play your snake game that you've edited somewhere else. You can also use both external software and the built-in editor and all you're gonna have to do is copy another reference. So just go back to Kareen. You can do this as many times as you want. Maybe you just wanna practice or have fun. Some people find it relaxing. So this time, instead of uploading the result, just use the built-in editor. You're gonna find the reference in the tray up there. There's all of the colors are already there for you to use. And here I wanna do my second shout out. The sprite you're watching me draw is from the game Nycra. It's by Endesga Groom. Why I wanna mention him is because he just started a Patreon to finish his game. I really love this game. It was also a demo I showed in Retronated Pixel Art News. I even picked it as fourth or fifth place in my top games I played in 2017 when, you know, when it comes to graphics, it's so nice, so pretty. If you like this kind of games, uh, go try out the demo and go on his Patreon. He will super appreciate if you help him finish this. And again, Thanks to all of everyone else that contributed their sprites. Yeah, go explore, see what there is in there. And once you're done copying a sprite in the built-in editor, you're gonna get a check mark. And now you can go to the edit option in the snake sprite project, just like I showed you last time. And that's how you get your editor. Here, I'm just gonna complete the food piece as well in the editor. And now I can play my snake game that I made in the pixel boy and external software that's it for this episode you've seen external software seen learning tasks you've seen the copy reference challenge so many indie games to copy that's it i'm super excited for the next update because now i'm actually gonna go do the graphics for the game it's gonna be an amazing completely new from the ground up graphics engine that i'm gonna write especially for this game i have some crazy ideas i'm gonna write all about it on patreon so if you love crazy pixel art tools graphic engine software updates it's gonna be technical it's gonna have gifts it's gonna be all follow me on patreon if you want to support the project 
all of the dollars that you send my way are actually gonna be added to your game account so you can buy the game in the end. All right, thank you very much for watching. All of this has been a long episode, I know. And uh, see you there. Bye-bye. Cheers.